Okay guys, I'm going to try not to make this video too long, but I want to give you everything you need to get started on this project. You're going to be making something for on the laser engraver. So to get started, you're going to go into Illustrator. Make sure you're using Illustrator and hit Create New. And we're going to create a new document. And I'm going to start with the default size I like to use for engraving. You don't need to fill the entire amount of space in this document, but I use this size mostly when people were making Christmas ornaments because it's a really good size. But if you're making, you know, um, you guys might rather make a keychain or a necklace or earrings or, you know, something like that. Most people make a keychain to start out with engraving. So you're going to make a document that's eight inches wide, four inches tall, with one artboard and no bleeds. So I'm going to go ahead and hit create on that. And you get a document that looks like this. So it's like a wide rectangle. Okay, whenever I start up Illustrator, I always do Command R to bring up my rulers. And for this one, I usually, you know, again, I show it the same way all the time because we sometimes do Christmas ornaments. I'm going to pull a blue line out of this ruler and drop it on the four. So I have two four by four squares on this eight inch wide, four inch tall document. Again, this is a really good size if somebody's making a Christmas ornament, but maybe you want to make like a charm to hang on a bag or, you know, a larger necklace. Usually a four inch by four inch keychain is pretty darn big, a little too big for, you know, a keychain, but this is the size I'm showing you to work with. I don't want you to go any bigger than this. So let's say for this project, I'm going to make a keychain. So just to give you, you know, a reference to look at, I'm going to make some shapes. I want to make an irregular shape, whoops, so that you can see what I'm going to show you for the next part. So some things we make need a front and a back. A keychain usually needs a front and a back to it so that, you know, it doesn't have blank, nothing on one side and then the picture on the other side. So usually I would suggest for a keychain or sometimes a necklace to make a front and a back. For earrings, if you decide to do earrings or something, you need to be thinner. I wouldn't make a back to them, um, just so that they're not super thick hanging from your ears. I have the parts for making dangly earrings and then the metal parts for keychains or the little loop to go on a necklace. I don't have necklace chains. Um, that's kind of what we have right now. So I'm just going to make some kind of shape here that is not symmetrical. Okay, so I'm just using circles and I'm going to group them together and use my pathfinder to um, unite them. So now I have this shape. So let's pretend this is my shape. Uh, maybe there's a character in here or something. If I had a character, I could use my pen tool and draw around it, whatever the shape is, or I could just, you know, make a circle keychain or a rectangle or whatever. It usually works better if you're working with shapes with rounded corners too. Sometimes, you know, a shape like this might be a nicer keychain because it's not sharp pointy corners, you know, when you have it in your hand or your pocket or your purse or whatever. Um, so usually it works nice with rounded edges. So let's say this is my shape of my keychain. I'm going to put my name on it. Maybe you want song lyrics. Maybe you want, you know, your favorite band or whatever. Uh, maybe you want a character on there. Let's just say I want my name on my keychain. So I'm going to just put it in there like that. Now the important thing for a keychain is you need a hole in it somewhere so you can attach the metal piece. So I'm going to make a little circle. I'm going to hold down shift so that it's, you know, round, perfect circle. And I'm going to pop this over here. Maybe I want it here. Okay. It almost looks like I don't know, a little animal, and that's its eyeball. The only thing is, is when you do this little circle, you don't want to get it too close to the edge. Because when I cut this plastic, that's too thin of an area, and it might rip out. So I want to bring it in just enough that my metal ring can get to it, but it's, um, you know, not so close that it's going to rip apart. So that probably looks pretty good. Okay, this looks like a small keychain. So to double check, since I have my rulers up, I'm going to group this thing together and I'm going to scooch it up into the corner because then I can use my rulers to measure it. So my zero point of the ruler usually, you know, by default is in the upper left hand corner. 
So I can pull blue lines out of here and see. Okay, so this is an inch and a half wide and almost an inch and a half tall. So that's kind of a small keychain. Maybe I want to make it bigger. So now would be the time to do it. So I'll just take this thing and stretch it on out. Now the only difference is now my little hole here isn't so small and I, you know, I don't want a giant hole in the keychain. So I'll ungroup it and I'll make this little circle smaller. Okay, and I want it close enough to the edge but not too close. So I just want to be real careful with where I put it. Okay, so I'm going to group these things again. And I don't want it all the way up in the corner. I don't want it touching the edge. Okay, so let's pretend that's my nice little keychain. I want to have a back to my keychain. So the shape needs to match up so I can glue them back to back perfectly. So I'm going to, you know, in case I forgot to group it, I'll group it, I'll copy it and paste it. And now these aren't going to line up if I glue them back to back. So what I need to do now is go to object with that shape selected. I'm going to go to transform and reflect. And this, make sure you hit preview so you can see which way you're flipping it. You're going to need to flip it vertically unless you have some other kind of shape going on. Um, but hit preview so you can see. You want it to be a mirror reflection. Now these things will glue back to back together perfectly. Okay, but my name is backwards. So I'm just going to grab the name and take the name out. All right, I'll put something else in there. I'm not exactly sure what right now, so I'm just gonna write keychain. Hopefully you guys make your stuff look cooler than what I'm making mine look, but just for example, and maybe I want a little star. Okay, so I'm gonna draw a little star. I, for some reason, always work off the edge and drag it in. That way I don't accidentally click on things I don't want to. So let me put a couple little stars in here. Now one thing about making keychains or any type of thing on the engraver, anything that is black is going to etch. Your plastic is going to be two color plastic. So the top color is the main color and anything that you make black in your design will etch away to reveal the lower color in the layers of the plastic. So let's say I picked a red piece of plastic that the back side is yellow. So anything that I've made black here is going to reveal the yellow. Anything that's white is going to stay red. So got to kind of keep that in mind when you're designing this. Okay. Also, now I need to tell the machine where to cut and where to etch. Right now it's going to etch this line and not cut it out. I want to tell it to cut it out. So I'm going to ungroup all these things. So I want them to be separate from each other. Make sure everything is ungrouped. So I usually do it a couple times to make sure. And I want to select the outline and the little circle. And I'm going to go over here for the weight of my stroke and I'm going to set it. It's very important that you set it at 0.001. It's going to be super, super light on the screen. Okay, you can barely see it, but that's going to tell the machine that that's going to cut and this is going to etch. So I would do that to both of them. For today, I'm just going to make them red so that you can see them better. And I'll bump up the thickness so it's more visible. So that is going to be cuts and that is going to be cuts. Okay. So in reality, you want it to be 0 0.001 for your stroke. 0.001 means it's going to cut. All right, put that there for a reminder. Let's say I want to make earrings. Okay, they don't necessarily need to have a front and a back to glue them back to back unless you really want. That's going to add weight to them. Um, so let's say I want to make a, I don't know how to describe the shape. Um, I'm picturing it in my head. So let's say I want my earring to be kind of like an egg shape. So I'm going to start with an oval. And I'm going to grab this bottom anchor and scooch it up. Maybe make this one a little higher. Okay. 
all right so maybe it's kind of like a loopy shape like that and maybe I want like a fun cutout that kind of matches it so I'm gonna copy and paste it make it smaller and I'm just kind of playing around you know you could kind of make it whatever you want maybe I want it like funky 60s look to it and I need a little hole for the metal part so maybe it looks like that okay so I'm gonna make them red instead I would really make them 0 0.001 for the stroke thickness but I'll make them red so you can see what I'm planning on cutting all right and then maybe actually I want to etch some stripes into this bad boy so I'm gonna take let's make a rectangle and I'm gonna fill it with black so anything black is gonna etch away so you're just working in black and white I'm only using red to kind of illustrate you know where stuff is going to cut so I'm gonna put some stripes in here so you could kind of like do a little pattern um, maybe just make sure it's you know the size you want it to be always double check your size so this is not going to be quite long enough so I'll bump another one up or I could stretch it out but I'm trying to not make my video take forever so I'll just figure out how wide this guy needs to be put one here and one more to make this longer okay so Okay, maybe I want to have stripes. So when this thing cuts out, it's going to cut out this oval egg shape, but then it's going to, and this will be cut out too, um, but then it'll have stripes etched into it to reveal the lower color. All right, I would probably also put this little guy up a little closer to the top so my metal ring can fit in here okay. All right, when you're completely done with this, what you want to do is go to save as and you want to save it as an illustrator file make sure it's an illustrator file you want to name it something simple plastic underscore in your initials plastics pretty easy I was gonna put engraving but sometimes I misspell things so plastic is easier um, make sure like I said it's an illustrator file if you've brought in any images from the internet they need to be downloaded and placed so download them and then go to file place to bring them in then you also need to have that file in a folder so if you bring in things from the internet make a folder and put you know this document and any images into that folder so it's all organized because we need to take everything with us just like when we're making stickers we need to take everything to the computer that's connected to the engraver um, let's see if I'm forgetting anything else. Uh, I would suggest working with line art for your first time doing engraving. Photos are pretty difficult. Um, there's some things we have to do to them that are a little hard for me to explain in the video. Uh, it's a little more involved. So I would work with line art. So if you find an outline or draw, you know, trace out a character or a, you know, logo or whatever that's going to work the best for your first time using the engraver all right if you want to make more than one thing and just make sure everything fits inside of this four by eight if i'm making earrings i obviously need two so i'll copy and paste it so i gotta let's see group this book together and we gotta make room for it so we're gonna scooch that over there and oops didn't mean to do that group this one and you know maybe I need to flip it upside down to fit this thing in here so use your space wisely again don't let anything touch the edge right now this is touching a little bit but I could take these two things and move them over bring them over till they're not touching okay if you have any questions I mean just try to do the best you can and I will be back tomorrow to answer any questions this is something we're going to pick at engraving probably next week and um, we'll kind of go from there so good luck and enjoy